So with, in collaboration with our partners, some of which who are here today, uh, we are announcing Snapdragon Satellite uh, tomorrow. It is basically for pole-to-pole -pole connectivity coverage around the world, uh, where you can send and receive messages on your mobile device. And there's a lot packed in here, but before I dive into more details, let me introduce to you our team from Iridium, who's one of our key partners, uh, the, the leaders in satellite communications, and also a representative from Garmin. I'll let them introduce themselves and uh, oh, they'll be around for questions and answers uh, towards the end. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here. My name is Brian Harton. I'm the Executive VP of Sales and Marketing at Iridium. And uh, we could not be more excited to be here today with all of you to witness this, uh, this great demo. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. I'm Greg Pelton, Chief Technology Officer for Iridium. Hello, everybody. My name is Joel Thompson. I run product management at Iridium. Krista Claus and I lead global corporate communications for Garmin. And maybe, yeah, let me just introduce myself. I'm Francesco Gridley, Vice President of Product Management at Qualcomm. And I've been at Qualcomm for a long time. And uh, right now I'm leading the uh, satellite communication and position location technologies at Qualcomm. So every time there is a GPS uh, receiver in a device, or now a satellite receiver in a device, that's, uh, that's my, my responsibility. <clears throat> Thank you, Francesco. Thanks, everyone. So we'll keep this short. I, want, I really want to get you guys to the actual demo because we have the technology and working um, uh, condition for, for a while, and we're excited to show it to you here today. Uh, so what did I mean by some of the things that are on this slide? First of all, I know there's a lot of talk about satellite communications in the industry in the last few months. Uh, a lot of companies have talked about either coming up with an offering. I'm trying to stay close to the mouse. <laughs> uh, so others have announced stuff that is either coming into the market sometime in the future or is already available commercially to some degree. But we feel like we have a combination of partners and technologies that really puts us um, at scale that, that's more scalable for the future. Uh, a few things are pointed out here itself. One is pole-to-pole -pole coverage, it means no matter where you are on Earth, as long as you have a view of the sky, you should be able to send and receive messages. So it's two-way messaging globally, whether you're in the ocean or in the forest or um, out in the, in the wild. All right. Uh, so the reason we can do global pole-to-pole uh, -pole coverage is because of Iridium's extensive satellite network uh, that, that uh, spans the entire globe uh, from North Pole to South Pole. Uh, and that's really a key differentiator for us uh, and, and for Iridium. Uh, the other th a differentiator for Iridium is that they have a low Earth, orbit, low Earth orbit constellation of satellites or LEO satellites, which has several advantages, especially if you want to use the regular mobile devices that you guys are using today. Um, and with, with small additions as, as new versions of those phones come up um, in the next few months or years, uh, it should be able to use that with satellite communications uh, for the messaging capability that I talked about. Already talked about two-way messaging. Uh, what's out there today is you can either send a message um, and there are other limitations where you have to select from a predefined list of messages, uh, whereas we're, we're offering uh, you, the user can type messages uh, and send to anybody they know that's already registered on their contacts and they can also receive messages back from them while they're out um, in, a, in a situation where they need to be connected. Uh, so this can be applied to a host of different uh, use cases, not just emergency situations. Uh, you might just be um, out wandering, you're, you're a wanderer, you're a traveler, uh, just happen to be in a no, no coverage zone. Uh, so this allows you to be able to, uh, to send and receive messages uh, from all these uh, different experiences in your life. And I already mentioned oceans. It's, it's, uh, you, you can think of the host of applications, uh, not just the consumer, but also commercial uh, over time, where the ability to send and receive satellite messages uh, from anywhere on the globe, especially in the oceans, uh, it opens up a whole slew of uh, use cases there as well. 
So in terms of user experience, I think the best way to see it is what uh, Francesca is going to show you in a couple minutes. Uh, but we wanted to make it as intuitive as possible. The app and the device we're going to show you is not something that will be offered to consumers directly. The device is what we call a mobile test platform. It's what all mobile technologies are tested on before OEMs implement them in their commercial devices. And also the app that we'll be showing you is something we only use for demo and test purposes. OEMs use it to test the technology and then they will lay their own, um, either their own app on top or um, or maybe hire a third party app developer uh, to, to, to provide over the top services. Um, so the solution supports regular text messaging, but also uh, OTT uh, text messaging type applications. So it's not limited to SMS or just emergency. So it has a lot of flexibility built in to the solution. So essentially the use case, uh, the simple scenario we're gonna show is uh, you type a message on your device if you're stuck somewhere and you don't have cellular coverage and the app will guide you to point to a sky or, or somewhere on the horizon uh, in the appropriate direction where you can locate a satellite and, and it'll automatically send the message. And the same thing applies for receive. When you're ready to receive, you click a button, you point, it guides you to point to the sky and then it receives all the messages that are waiting for you in the queue. Um, so the solution is offered as part of our uh, Snapdragon Modem RF system, uh, X70 to begin with, which is now integrated into Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, which was a platform that we announced uh, just a few weeks ago um, in November. And uh, there's no new uh, modem chip needed for this. It's built into the existing modem chip, and we have the full front, to, uh, front end solution for it as well. So we are able to offer the modem to RF solution to our customers so they can quickly build uh, devices that support this feature and bring it to market. Uh, we are expecting Snapdragon satellite uh, powered devices to be available in the second half of this year. Uh, and as a horizontal enabler of the ecosystem, we expect multiple OEMs to come up with devices uh, later this year. So the OEMs can, they don't have to have the whole Snapdragon chip, they can just choose your modem? And this works, or do you have to have? Let me address that. So uh, I think you will see from the demo there is a tight integration between the modem itself and the uh, and the rest of the phone. For example, we are using the sensor information from the device to know which direction the phone is pointing, and we are using uh, um, the GNSS information to know where the device is. So there is a tight integration between the modem and also what the, some of the software actually runs in the application processor. So at this point, there is plan only to make this available in the SOC. Uh, I don't think uh, uh, it's not impossible to make it available uh, for a device that only have our modem, but that will be something for the future, most likely not in the smartphone, but it could be for like automotive or IoT or, or, or computer de devices. But that is uh, essentially a second phase that uh, we are considering for, for the future. For the, in the short term, you will see this uh, only in Snapdragon premium tier SOC. Can I just ask as well, um, you say second half of the year, but we'll have these devices with, with HN2 out much sooner. Will they yes. update later? Is that possible? Yes, okay, so uh, the devices, uh, okay, the question is that uh, uh, is the devices that launch right away, uh, we're going to be able to do this? Well, it depends if the uh, hardware that supports the specific band of Iridium, the Iridium band is L-band 16, uh, 1600 and uh, uh, 16 and 1626 and 26.5 megahertz uh, that's not a 3gpp band so while our support is included in the baseband and the transceiver the oem needs to have some uh, small changes on the rf front end in order to implement uh, uh, this particular band so you cannot expect that this uh, feature will become available with just with no air upgrade so you need actually to support the band and so that's why i think it's unlikely that products that coming out in the first half will have it because we just announced this partnership and and so but you can expect you, there are already multiple oem working on devices which they should become available in uh, middle or definitely second half of, uh, of the year this requires special antenna Okay, the antenna actually uh, we, we can use the internal antenna and typically uh, 
this band is actually very benign in terms of support because uh, it's very close to the GPS frequencies and it's also close to the mid band uh, frequencies used by cellular. So um, a dedicated antenna would actually help performance, but uh, we have seen that multiple OEM are designing it with uh, planning to share an antenna. Actually, in our own demo, we are going to share a mid-band antenna. So it does not require an, ex an additional antenna, definitely not an external antenna. Uh, most likely you can share an existing antenna. It just has to be uh, a good antenna, which is located roughly at the top of the device. Otherwise, uh, it will be difficult to, to reach the satellite. But uh, mostly uh, the antennas in the smartphones are located at the top. So that's not a problem. So yeah, in, in principle, a dedicated antenna would help, but it's not necessary. And we see multiple designs are being done with uh, sharing an existing antenna. So to clarify, the any of the first half phones with the Snapdragon, it doesn't have the correct RF that it needs for this. It's just ones in the second half that they've chosen to include that. That that is correct. That is correct. So the first half devices, um, we have the same modem and transceiver that is capable, but they may not have the RF components that is uh, needed to support the band. Yeah. Is there any limitation to the length of the text you can send? Okay, so this is uh, actually the difference uh, with uh, what our competition has, has offered is that we really don't have a limit on the size because the data rate we can actually achieve to the satellite is actually higher and so we can actually transmit a full size SMS 140 bytes um, and within uh, uh, typically 10 seconds, and the, on average is three seconds. Uh, you will see in the demo yourself, once you, we point to the satellite, the message goes pretty fast in, in a matter of seconds, not minutes. And we can have the, uh, essentially the full size SMS, 140 bytes without, uh, without any problems. And, and the user interface will, will basically in indicate to the user when you're running out of uh, characters. Um, but of course, we can also do predefined messaging, like in case of emergency, we will uh, allow the user to select uh, uh, from a menu all the information that is relative for the emergency and so that it will be included in the message. But then once the uh, conversation starts to, to know more details about the nature of the emergency or, or the conversation that needs to be done, then it can be free text messaging back and forth. Uh, and there is essentially full size SMS can be sent within three seconds. Typically. So that, uh, okay, two, two, actually two questions, yeah. So one is for emergency and the other for person-to-person -person messaging. For, for emergency, that is uh, really, um, it's up to us and our partner Garmin to define the exact format that will be available in, uh, in the service. So and every, sorry, so every handset maker that would adopt this, the emergency aspect would look the same? Essentially, yes. Essentially, yes, because the, um, the, the emergency will be provided by Garmin. And uh, now the user interface may be different because OEM always have the capability to put uh, um, a personalization or a skin, right? So that would be different, but, but the underlying technology will be the same. Now, when you do person-to-person -person messaging, mm. that would be, could be completely different because it could be over the top. Um, application that could use this or it could be a regular SMS. By the way, as you will see in the demo, you will see that we are able to send messages and receive messages from the t re same phone number. So this will look like, uh, if you want, it behaves similar to an over the top app where you can reuse the same phone number to ex exchange over the top <laughs> messages, right? So you see, this is the same except that it goes over satellite, okay? So that is, uh, that is the, main, uh, the main concept. What about the cost of the Okay, so cost, we cannot address, it depends, really depends on, the, on the customers. So the, our, the OEM, how they will want to price it to the consumer. Uh, so we are a technology provider, we are a horizontal technology provider, so we make available the technology and then it's up to the um, OEM to decide how to charge it. But uh, you can assume that the emergency will not be very expensive. Uh, if, if it doesn't be any cost at all to the user, right? Slightly adjacent, oh, yeah. slightly adjacent question, is this 
going to be a service that's provided by an OEM? Is this going to be carrier dependent? Like, where is that yeah. capability going to come from? Okay, so the, the service for emergency, the basic service is actually going to be provided by Qualcomm together with Garmin. So uh, how it is integrated in the user interface, it could be customized by the customer, as we said before, uh, but essentially it's Qualcomm and, and Garmin that provides the emergency service uh, provisioning. Uh, so essentially the call center where the messages are uh, addressed, it will be the, the same call center that Garmin has, which is uh, uh, basically world leading uh, uh, call center for uh, for this kind of situations. So already, as you know, Garmin is the provider for um, the Garmin in reach um, uh, service that they use Iridium for emergency uh, communication. So basically, the same uh, the same. Uh, team that is handling the emergency over Garmin in reach will basically be handling the, these emergencies. Now for person to person that's a different story that we need uh, a depend so we make available the technology but then it's up to the customer uh, how they want to offer it if they want to offer it directly or if they want to partner with a, a, a service provider like a terrestrial service provider all that is uh, possible but it really depends on the customer it's a customer decision not a platform decision but for emergency it, we will take care of it together with Garmin. so how will it work in case of emergency like who we am are i texting who where is my emergency going out or do i need to reach out to somebody specific Yes, we will. We will see with uh, with the demo, but essentially, yeah, it, it will. Uh, uh, I think you we will see with the, with the demo how it works. But essentially, once uh, to summarize it in the in the actual um, product, the idea is that once you try to dial an emergency number like nine one one here in US or one one two in Europe, and you are out of coverage. At that point, the user interface will prompt you with the option to send an emergency message instead of via satellite. And then if you select that option, then you will activate uh, the, the emergency connectivity. And similarly, on the, um, on the, um, the, the lock screen, if you are in an emergency, you can actually make an emergency call even from the lock screen. Same thing, if you are out of coverage, the lock screen will actually direct you to start uh, this emergency communication. And then what you will see in the, what you see in the demo, actually the demo is a demo for person-to-person -person messaging. Uh, of course, we cannot demonstrate an emergency service because uh, we won't want to create a real emergency. But, uh, but essentially, the emergency will work. Uh, the, the device will recognize when it's an emergency because you are trying to do an emergency call or because the messaging app has a button for an SOS button okay so it's up to the OEM how they want to integrate but the lock screen and the dialer are two definitely two areas which will be integrated and then there is the option to add an SOS button to any app you want if you in principle so it will be app-based it's not going to be something integrated into it will be, well, there will be some support for Android, uh, but I think it will be mostly app-based. Yes, that is uh, correct. So Android support, if you want to have the SOS button in the Android Messenger, then of course it will be integrated with Android. And there are discussions going on for that possibility, but we cannot, uh, uh, it depends really not only on us, it depends also on Google, right? Right.